Sean Spicer, RNC Communications Director and Chief Strategist, with me here in studio. Nice to see you again, Good Sean. Good to see you. In person. Yeah. Here's what Trump said on Hannity last night, okay? Watch this. I don't need their endorsements. I don't think it matters whether or not I get, you know, potential presidential endorsements or past. I mean, look, the world is a mess. This country is a mess. And I'm not looking for their endorsements. What I want is the endorsement of the people. That's the only thing that matters to me, Sean. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I think he's done a good job so far of unifying the party. When you look at where we were a couple weeks ago uh, and where we are today, we're in a really great place vis-a-vis -vis the Democrats. They are truly fractured. They've got a whole socialist left-wing aspect of the party that Bernie Sanders represents that's saying that they truly will not go back in line and support Hillary Clinton if she comes out the nominee. They're talking about not just sitting on their hands, but a good chunk of them voting for Trump. Look, Look, I think he's right. At the end of the day, we'd love to have everybody support be as unified as possible. When you look at the poll numbers, the Republican Party is unified. There are some outliers here or there, but that happens every election cycle, frankly. But these are significant They outliers. are, sure. No <laughs> I mean, I, I, they're Republicans who used to sit in the White House. Right. But there's also, there's also you look at Senator Rubio and, and Rick Santorum, and his competitors in the primary system have largely rallied around him. And I think that's a good thing. So we're, I, look, I'll take where we are versus the Democrats any day of the week. Can you say today that Cleveland will be a unifying event? event. I, surely. I think it will be not only unifying, but it's going to be electric. I think the world is going to see uh, a party that is energized, a party that is unified, and a party that has solutions that uh, that this country that, you know, desperately needs. So no talk of all this fractured stuff? No, I, again, I think, I think look, it's great cocktail conversation for folks to have. Uh, but when you look at the numbers, when you look at the reality, it's just not there. And I know it's not as easy to talk to uh, about the Democrats, but it's, the numbers bear it out. The Democrats have a much bigger problem problem on their hands than Republicans. We've got some big names, but at the end of the day, you look at the overall numbers in the polling. The Republican Party is unified. All of those competitors that he fought tooth and nail against over the primary process have come together and have said that he's the guy. Uh, I think you said, was it two or three weeks ago, it's not your job to change Donald Trump. Probably. More or less, right? Paraphrasing. <laughs> and Mitch McConnell's doing a round of interviews with a new book, and he said Donald Trump's not going to change the GOP. Well, I think there's, look, uh, he is a, a different kind of candidate. He's someone that's not a politician. He's a successful businessman. And I think that he's not out here to sort of reshape the party. He wants to, as he says, he wants to make America great again. He wants to fix a broken government, whether it's the lines of the TSA or the problems that the veterans uh, face in this country with getting the care that they need and deserve. He wants to fix this country. He wants to create jobs. He's not looking to be a, a, a party guy. He wants to make America better. I thought it was an interesting comment from the Senate Majority Leader. Another, uh, another prominent Republican who has suggested that he will support Donald Trump. Uh, maybe it's not the endorsements you have to worry about. Maybe it's the women in America. Well, I, I think when you look again, I, I think there's a lot of media narratives that when you look at the polls just don't add up. You know, again, look at where, where the Democrats really are. You have the opportunity for the first woman to be president of the United States. And who are they supporting? A 74-year-old socialist from Vermont. They're not supporting Hillary Clinton because I think women aren't a monolithic group that only vote because of someone's gender. They're looking at who's going to create jobs, who's going to take care of the, the looming health care crisis that we have. And just today, you saw United Healthcare pull out of California. That's going to send sky, premium sky skyrocketing. This is a, a health care system that Hillary Clinton proudly champions. And now millions of Americans, women who are running households, who are running businesses, are now going to face those additional costs. Let me get to Clinton in a moment here, because you put out a big memo this yeah. morning. I'll ask you about that in a second. But first, all the talk in the past 24 hours about a third party candidate. Uh, do you see it happening? And if so, does that doom Republican chances? <laughs> no. Uh, it, look, it's America. Someone wants to a few ballots here and there, but two things. Number one, anyone who is seriously tries to, from a conservative Republican standpoint, to get on a ballot is helping Hillary Clinton, and there's no two ways about that, because there is no path to electability. So just to be clear, any conservative, any Republican that w that does not want the policies of Hillary Clinton uh, to be in the White House and, and name Supreme Court justices needs to understand that any support of anyone but the Republican nominee does just that. Uh, and that was but, Trump's but, message and, and he was right. He's absolutely right. But number two, is look at what a, can, a, a candidate for president needs three things a candidate organization and money and none of the twitter tw you know the tweets that are going to discuss any of that it is purely a, a tweet discussion that's all it amounts to because there's no substance there uh, june 1st 2016 here's your memo 
Summer is only starting, but Hillary Clinton is already feeling the heat. That's right. What are you finding in the story? Well, I think for ye for months, almost years now, she's talked about the fact that she acted completely in accordance with the law. And here you have the Inspector General of the State Department, appointed by Barack Obama, saying that she unequivocally broke the rules of the State Department, that she did not follow protocols. So this idea that it didn't matter and she was she had all the authorities to do that. Not only did she do that, but then her aides sought to actually obstruct this this uh, this this um, investigation has stood in the way of, of the American people understanding what really happened. So I think this really goes to the core of Hillary Clinton. She's got one set of rules for her and one set for everybody else. How much do people care? I think they care a lot because they want their president to know that they actually care about them, that they'll follow the rules, that they're trustworthy. And it's all of the things that this, this instance is just one more that's emblematic of who Hillary Clinton really is. It started way back, you know, in the 70s and the 80s. Every decade there's another Clinton scandal. And I think people remember that Hillary Hillary Clinton doesn't represent them. She doesn't represent their problems. There's a reason they don't trust her. It's because she does time and time again shows that she's got a second set of rules for us. We covered a lot of ground, Sean. I hope you come on back. Okay. I, I will. I promise. Nice to see you in person. Good Sean Spicer from the RNC. Thank you. Thanks.